welcome to Free Jackson 5, a series of brief interviews where you get to know your favorite New England players. I'm Dallin Sanford, former U.S. Eagle and current World Rugby commentator. And this episode, we spend five minutes with fellow South African Peter Janssen, one of the international forwards who will be representing the Free Jacks in Major League Rugby 2021. Peter, you certainly haven't missed a meal by the looks of it. No, look, that's one thing in front of our Afrikaans culture and stuff. You're, not, you're taught not to miss a meal. So that's something I, I keep up with quite well, yeah. Let's talk about where you grew up in South Africa and also give us a bit of background into the other sports you played outside of rugby. Okay, so I grew up near Johannesburg um, from the East Rand. So if you're from South Africa, you know the East Rand's quite tough. So I grew up there most of my life. Did spend a little time at the coast, so I think that's why I get my, my love for the beach and so on. Other sports, other than rugby, I like enjoyed, I enjoy golf. Uh, my dad always used to go play golf with me. Or with my, my mom used to take along with. She used to drive the cart. I enjoyed golf and cricket, just something I always just had a fascination about cricket players. I don't know why. I always just got glued when it was test cricket, even if it was South Africa against Australia or Australia against New Zealand, Pakistan, it doesn't matter. I always just found it so fascinating uh, the way guys can bowl so far, like fast and everything. And I just enjoyed it immensely. And it came to a stage where I had to choose between cricket and rugby. And yeah, obviously I took rugby and it worked out well for me, if I can put it like that. It certainly did. And we'll take you to the Red Sox uh, baseball game here so you yeah. can get to check it out, you know, uh, using your cricket skills as well. Then listen, let's talk about the culture of rugby in South Africa. Uh, you know, for example, let's pretend it's a Saturday, South Africa facing New Zealand. Describe what that's like, because that's very different to what rugby is here in the U.S. You look forward to one of those events the whole year. You look forward to when Australia and especially, like I said, New Zealand. And if it's a Northern Hemisphere, England, especially you build the whole week up. You make sure that the meat's ready for the bra, like we call it Yeah, You make sure that's ready. You make sure everybody knows what time there is early so you don't miss a minute. And it is just one of the most intense but yet fun things you look forward to as a South African. You're making me hungry there with the biltong and the bra, my friend. <laughs> Can't go a week without having biltong or a bra. So if we can, we'll bra every night. I know you and I are going to get on well when you get here to, to Boston. 100%, 100%, 100%. So let's touch on your rugby background as well. You're playing, you were with the Lions rugby organization for a number of years. Are there some moments that stand out to you as your highlights? I've got three just that I can think of quickly now. And the one is when I was under 21, we won the, the provincial competition here. And for us as a team, it was, it was just something nobody backed us. Nobody gave us a chance. And then next moment we, we saw we were in the final. And we just decided, well, we might as well just win it while we're here. So we did that. That's something I'll remember. Just that group of players... I don't think a lot of them still play rugby at this stage, if I'm being honest. But again, it's just something you'll remember forever. Then obviously making my, my debut for the Lions in Super Rugby and in Argentina against the Jaguars. It, I mean, it was stars all over. Augustine Creevy, Jackie Tukulet. I mean, it was just, it was immense. Up here with the auntie was with us, Kortok or some Malcolm Marks. I mean, it was Warren Whiteley was there. I mean, it was something you know, as, a child, as, a, as a youngster, you look into the union and think, that's where I would like to be one day. And for it to happen, it was just, yeah, it was amazing. I'll always remember that moment. And then last year, it's the third one. Probably the one I will always keep nearest to the heart is we played in the Curry Cup final. Now, again, that's a provincial tournament we have here. And South African derbies are something that are just quite next level to anywhere else I've been in the world. So to be part of that final and coming so close to winning it as well, we only lost by three points. So it was, it was heartbreaking, but it was something that will stick with me as well. You also had a chance to work with uh, one of your mentors, Springbok and the monster, Malcolm Marks. Um, what's that raging bull like? And tell us a bit about your relationship with him. Malcolm is probably one of the nicest persons you'll ever meet or feel. I mean, he's always there helping hand. If you, you can, he's, he's always open for any questions. It doesn't matter what it is about. It can be big, it can be small, it can be positional, it can be anything. You'll give, always give his honest opinion about it. That's what I like. And that's what I've always admired about Malcolm. He's always, give, he's always honest. And it's, it's, there's no, like, oh, can I say front about what he is or not. He's a happy-go-lucky person. He is very friendly. And he's always there to help. So, obviously, when it comes to training, he does not hold back. Again, that's where he is, where he is. And, again, I grew a lot from that training against him because I always knew I trained against the best no matter what. He's done so much for me in my career. And I don't even think he knows it, but I'll, one day I would like to just tell him to be like face to face. That would be nice. In the meantime, we'll tag him in this on social media and, and get the word yeah. out there. At least yeah, you yeah. didn't do what uh, Terran Tembu did. He threw the beast under the bus by saying he was the worst roommate ever because, <laughs> because he wasn't allowed to talk or say a word after 7 p.m. The beast needed his, his rest. 
<laughs> Let's switch now also to American rugby. What's your perception of, of rugby in the U.S. and also the Major League Rugby competition? Definitely a growing competition in the U.S., but not just in the U.S. I mean, I'm from South Africa, and everybody knows already from Major League Rugby as well. So, I mean, it's I think it's quickly becoming one of the more most – well, it's going to be one of the most popular rugby competitions to play in in the next, I, th- I would say, two to three years. And everybody is just excited about the brand that they play and what happened with the coaches are that are coming in, the players are in, the mentors of coachship. I know Eddie Jones was there a few months ago. The amount of knowledge going in and the work that's being put in by MLL to make it one of the best competitions in the world, it's exciting. And I'm just from a rugby guy perspective, I'm looking forward to being part of that growth and to see where this can go. Because, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. Well, I know that all the fans here, especially in New England, are very eager to get you this side as well. Your expertise is much needed. We want to thank you so much for joining Free Jackson 5. That's Peter Janssen. Watch him trample people in the 2021 Major League Rugby season. You can keep updated with the New England side at freejacks.com, where it's always champagne rugby, and let's ride.